Jehu says he looked up at the window and he called out, Who's on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered the wall and the horses as they trampled her underfoot. Jehu went in and ate and drank. Take care of that cursed woman, he said, and bury her, for she was a king's daughter. But when they went out to bury her, they found nothing except her skull, her feet, and her hands. They went back and told Jehu, who said, This is the word of the Lord that he spoke through his servant Elijah the Tishbite. On the plot of ground at Jezreel, dogs will devour Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's body will be like refuse on the ground in the plot at Jezreel, so that no one will be able to say, This is Jezebel. So whereas Ahab died in battle, a stray arrow uh, finds a place in his armor, it goes right through, and he bleeds to death, Jezebel is thrown out a window, defenestrated, to use the fancy word, and she falls, her blood splatters, she's trampled, and the dogs eat everything from her, except, I guess, the bitter parts, the hands and the feet, and, of course, the skull. And so she is unrecognizable. Ahab and Jezebel, they are a bad combination. They were a good combination in a way. If this uh, pagan queen wanted to undermine the God of Israel, it was a very effective combination. But in the eyes of the Lord, it's bad. If you're not a strong man and you marry a take-charge type woman, pray that she's spiritual. Pray that she has a fear of God. If you're a strong woman, and yet you know you are tempted with worldliness, be sure to seek a spiritual husband. I think it was this combination of a weak and manipulated, unspiritual man and a strong and controlling, unspiritual woman that made them such a dangerous couple in the Bible. What do we learn about God? I see at least three lessons that emerge in our study of Ahab and Jezebel. One, God's world is moral. And that means that immoral choices lead to harmful consequences, just as moral choices lead to good. Second, God punishes those who disrespect his word. Sooner or later, Ahab does not meet his fate immediately. He even has that period where he is somewhat responsive to the word of God. That's at the end of chapter 21. But it doesn't last very long. His punishment catches up with him in battle in the very next chapter. God punish, punishes those who disrespect his word. And, and three, God responds favorably to repentance, even on the part of the most hardened sinner. For a moment there, it looked like Ahab was turning to the Lord. Uh, a few lessons from now, we'll be looking at the amazing story of King Manasseh, where this is best illustrated. But to underline those three points again, one... God's world is moral. Immoral choices lead to harmful consequences. Two, he punishes those who disrespect his word. And three, God responds favorably to repentance even on the part of the most hardened sinner. We serve God who's not just a consuming fire, but he's a God of grace and a God of love.